<laughs> but you and Jimmy have been friends forever. Oh, yeah, 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 since 19, at least 74, 75. Okay, let's delve into this friendship with Cornell a little bit. But sure. about, ten, about 10 years ago, you or sometime back in the past, you had a falling out with you had a falling five, out with Jimmy five, five to six years ago, five to six years ago was the fall. What was, out. what was that about? Okay. You know, you know who Vince Russo is, right? Oh yeah. Well, Jimmy and I had a bit of a falling out. Cause I, I was doing my own podcast and bouncing from co-host to co-host. And some people have said that I'm difficult to get along with and that I like to talk too no. much. And I like to dominate shows. Yeah. I've heard it. I don't know if it's true or not, but there's a lot of people saying it. So I was going through co-host like X lax through a widow woman, Jerry Lawler quote. <laughs> and, uh, so about, about every two or three weeks, I was firing a co-host and I'd have to get somebody because I hated doing the shows by myself. I didn't know how to do this shit. StreamYard saved me on that, by the way. Uh, finally, I can do the shows by myself now. Oh, okay. and uh, you, why are you talking about that? Do you still do shows? Oh, yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. how can the how can the fans find your shows? Uh, they can find me on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash the Bolin, B O L I N, Alley, the Bolin Alley. And okay. uh, I am, I started doing podcasting in 2007 when I started doing Who's Slamming Who. Jimmy Cornette shit on it. Told me what a mark I was. I can't believe you're on there doing these damn shows. I said, Well, I don't smarten anybody up. I said, I just be who I is and, and do that. And, uh, Two years later, of course, Jimmy now gets into podcasting, has the great debate with me hosted by Jerry Jarrett. Jerry Jarrett got into podcasting because of me, because he never knew when me and Cornette were working or shooting. And he says, I've known Jimmy my whole, he says, I think you two legit hate each other. He said that on the great debate. And little did he know that in uh, seven years ago, six years ago, that that actually became the point. But the reason we had the falling out is that Brian last, uh, his co-host, I did not care. And he tried to tell me who I could have on my shows. They already knew I was friends with Vince Russo and that I did shows with him from time to time. He would do mine. I would do his. And so Brian last says, well, I'd love to have you on our network. He says, but there's one rule. You cannot have Vince Russo on the shows over here on the Arcadian Vanguard or whatever the fuck they call it. I said, all right, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. I know how bad Cornette hates Russo. Okay, I'll give you that one. But other than that, you ain't got jack shit to do with my shows other than you're the co-host. It's it's the bowling alley, not the Brian alley. So other than that, I do what the fuck I want. All right, deal. So I do two shows. And on the second show, my kids were on the show. Brian loses his goddamn mind. He calls Cornette bitching. Uh, the Bolin Alley, uh, the, you, he, those kids can't be on the show no more. From now on, it's just me and Bolin. The kids are off the show. Cornette calls me with these concerns. I said, well, I got news for you. The show is called The Bolin Alley. My son's last name is Bolin. My daughter-in-law's last name is Bolin. He doesn't get to tell me who to have it on the show other than Vince Russo. I granted you that wish. So no, fuck you. Pardon me. Uh, damn you. And, uh, I'm going to do the show the way I want, or I'm not going to do the damn thing at all. Well, he don't really want the kids on there. So well, let me make it real simple for you. Tell him to shove the goddamn show up his ass after two weeks. And I'll find another co-host as I've gotten pretty good at doing. And, uh, and I'm just going to move on. Well, you just can't quit. You just started two weeks ago. I said, I can quit. And I just did. That was on a Friday. Well, Kenny, take the weekend and think about it. I think we can save this situation. Oh, we can save it whenever you quit doing shows with Brian last. Well, Jimmy can't know how to do that shit. He's got to have Brian last to do the shows. So Brian wasn't going nowhere, and I was never going to do a show with Brian on it again. So I went elsewhere. I forget where I ended up at. Uh, some other guy in Ohio uh, became my co-host. And then I, he got mad at me because I didn't let him do the Anthony Scaramucci show with me. And But we already had me, Chris, and Maya. We only knew we had the mooch for about 45 minutes. And he was still working for Donald Trump the first time I had him on. But I liked him. I liked his personality. I liked his coolness and his calmness. So even working for Donald Trump, I had Anthony Scaramucci on. We got along great. But my co-host was pissed that I didn't let him do that show with us. I said, and so he got mad and started being a little baby and a little bitch. So I fired him and then started doing the shows all by myself once I discovered StreamYard. And, uh, and then eventually Bob Hazelwood uh, became uh, interested in the money I was raising for Filipino families. And he's been my co-host now for about two or three years, I guess. And uh, he's the longest reigning co-host, other than a guy I had in England named Harry Barnett. But I had to fire his ass, too. Those Brits <laughs> suck. You got you do, never trust a Brit. I'm telling you right now. Oh, no offense, James. No offense. Oh, no, I'm taken. I didn't think so. 
So that's so, the short version. <laughs> oh, oh, so what led to the demise is that now I'm working for Russo's network. Russo hired me to be on his shows, paying me three or four times more money than I was getting from Cornette. So I'm doing the Russo shows. And then Jimmy calls me. So we do a bucket full of chicken necks on uh, like Wednesday mornings or something at 930 in the morning. Uh, which, a, bu a bucket full of chicken. That's the name of a show. That's the name of Russo's one of his shows. He's got countless shows. Bucket full of chicken necks is a show where mainly you talk about movies, television, music, shit like that. Why it's called a bucket full of chicken necks. I never did know the reason for that. But Russo asked me if I would do those shows with him at like 930 in the morning. They're recorded and they go on Patreon or whatever. I said, yeah, sure, we can do that. I love all those topics. So, yeah, we'll have some fun with it. So Jimmy calls me at 930 in the morning as I'm doing Russo's show. We're, we're already in the middle of the show. And Jimmy keeps calling and he won't just lighten up Jim Cornette on my landline. And I said, Russo, you are not going to believe who's calling. He says, uh, I said, so I pick it up, hang it up. And I hang up on Jimmy like three or four times. Around. He, he keeps fucking calling. And I said, God damn. I said, I'm going to have to talk to him. So I pick it. I said, Jim, I'm doing a podcast <laughs> right now. Do me a favor. Call me back later. I'm doing a whose podcast you do. And I said, well, never mind that. I said, but I'm doing a podcast. I said, give me about an hour and I'll talk, call you that. Uh, Kenny, how many lies have you told today? I said, well, it's 930 in the morning, so I haven't really told very many yet, but I'll work on that later today. Well, let me tell you about the lie. I just, so he tells these lies he's been telling to get out of doing shit he don't want to do, and he's telling it on the Vince Russo show. I said, well, that's a great story, Jimmy, but we're going to have to talk about it. I'm telling you, man, I got to go. Well, whose podcast are you doing? I said, well, don't worry about that, but I got to go, Jimmy. So finally, he lets me go. Vince Russo, and if you know the voice, man, Kenny Bolin? Was that Jimmy Cornette? I said, yeah. Jimmy Cornette was on the Vince Russo show? I said, yeah. And I'm sick because I know our friendship is over now. Once Jimmy finds out his voice was on the Russo show, he's going to lose his freaking mind. And I'm laying <laughs> my head down and I'm, and I'm sick. I'm literally sick because Jimmy and I had been on thin ice anyway over the Brian last shit. Russo is going to be the straw that broke the camel's back and I know it. And I'm just sick. And, uh, so we end the show. Russo is gloating because this is a recorded show and I'm expecting Jim Cornette to find out his voice is on the Russo show a week later or whenever the hell they air the show. Russo calls me back about two 30 in the afternoon. And he says, Kenny, I just want to let you know. He says, have you heard from Jimmy? I said, yeah. What did he say? I said, well, he's fucking furious. And he uh, cussed me out and uh, hung up on me. I said, I'll never hear from him again. Kenny call him back, tell him, bro, Bro, I'm not going to do that to you. I'm not going to end your friendship. I'm not going to end your friendship, bro. That would be dirty ball. But do you mind if I show your reaction after you hang up on Jimmy? I don't care, Vince. It's your show. Do what you want. Yeah, you can show the reaction. I said, you can air the goddamn clip if you want. I said, it's your show. And no, bro, I'm not going to do that to you. Uh, let, let Jimmy know I'm not going to air it. Uh, but I am going to show your reaction. And I said, I, that's fine. Go ahead. So I don't bother to call Jimmy back, and we never, ever spoke again. Never spoke again. And, and how long ago was this? Uh, five or six years. Be wow. Best friends since 1974. Uh, as a matter of fact, we would talk to each other like dogs, and if I disagree with something he said, if I thought something he said was racist or homophobic or whatever the case, I'd call him out on it, even on his shows. Everybody thought it was stick. Many times it wasn't. I called him out on the hot tub shit. Many people thought it was stick. They found out later it wasn't. So we could shoot on each other and everybody think it was stick. He would say all these horrible things about me. I'd do the same to him. Everybody thinking it's a work. It wasn't. A lot of it was shoots. And he even told me, he said, I hope you know you're the only son of a bitch on this planet. I'll let talk to me that way. I said, I hope you know you're the only person on this planet. I'll let talk to me the way that you do. So we both have a pro and that's how our life was is that we could tell it. And there'd be many times if I was getting ready to react to something that, you know what, maybe I'm overreacting here. Maybe I shouldn't have. So I'd call Jimmy to get an unbiased opinion. He didn't have a dog in the fight. Jimmy, here's what happened. Here's what I'm thinking of doing, man. Kenny, don't do that. No, come on. Let's not go there or yeah, motherfucker. And then amp it up times 10. If you need my help, I'm there. Many of the conversations would go that way. And uh, much like you, I, I would, I wouldn't hesitate to call you and say, Dutch, here's my beef. What do you think? How should I handle it? I would, I wouldn't hesitate to do that. And, well, uh, and I, I did, I, the same, I, and I did the same with Jim. 